first thing is a duet. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Okay, well, let's take a look here now at Matt. Uh, so where are we at now? John. John chapter 6. <laughs> you know, I can't tell you what a joy it is to preach over there at that convalescent home every Saturday night. Mm -hmm. uh, to know that these people are hearing things they've never heard before. Sure. Like like they're hearing them now. <laughs> And uh, maybe they were in church some and know some of the songs of some of the words. But even when they're learning about Jesus, they've never heard about Jesus like they're hearing about him now. And it's such a joy because you can tell a lot of them appreciate it. Amen. Amen. And uh, so let's take a look here at John 6. And uh, we'll start reading here um, at verse 37. Let's stand up out of respect to the Word of God. And we'll read 37 down here to 51, and then we'll expound on it here a little bit. Amen. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. <laughs> And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Mm -hmm. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Right. He's the what is it? Mm -hmm. He's the manna. Amen. Amen. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Mm -hmm. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Yeah. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, mm -hmm. he hath seen the Father. Right. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Amen. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the bread of the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Mm -hmm. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. All right, let's pray now. Father, we're so thankful yeah. for Jesus saying these things and pointing out to us that he really was sent from the Father, Amen. and he really was, in essence, the Father, because like he said, the Bible said that God, mm -hmm. the Father, would speak to these men and when Jesus was first speaking that was the father speaking to them mm -hmm. but they didn't want to believe it right. they were too hung up and saying what is it so Lord help us <coughs> recognize Jesus for who he was and see that yes he's the savior and thank God that he his body mm -hmm. was broken for us on the cross that, it, that, it, that again Lord he's that bread that again was sacrificed there and even put in the oven to bake down in the earth three days and nights. Then he popped out again, proving we can live forever, proving he'll raise us from the dead. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that blessed hope of the resurrection. And in Jesus' name we thank you and amen. Amen. All right, so here again we have this assurance of the believer in verses 37 to 40. Again, all that the Father giveth me, him... Uh, shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Amen. It's a great thing knowing that you're safe in Jesus' hands. Amen? Amen. Right. Yes, sir. And with Jesus, you can be sure that heaven's your home. 
but if you don't have Jesus, then you might as well be of all men most miserable. Because Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. Amen. That's right. So, hallelujah for God's predestination in that sense that, buddy, if you come to Jesus, he ain't going to cast you out. What makes you think he cast you out? Well, that preacher over there told me, you better not listen to that preacher. You better listen to Jesus. Amen. That's right. It isn't a salvation that only lasts until the next bowel movement or the next meal you eat. Amen. No, 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 no. Right. It's a salvation that's an everlasting life. It's an eternal life, he said. Right, right, right. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So we've got Jesus' word on it. He's going to give us his promise. Mm-hmm. We'll not be cast out. No. We see Jesus' purpose here in verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Everything Jesus did was according to the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to tell them, He that seen me has seen the Father. And yet he's going to say, No man has seen the Father at any time. Because again, in that sense that as far as the timeline's concerned, nobody's ever come down from heaven, but Jesus did. But see, you've got to believe the Bible to understand that. And these men were having trouble because they thought, well, wait a minute, weren't, wasn't he born in Nazareth? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Don't we know his mother? Mm-hmm. When did he come down from heaven? Well, the truth is, if you'd been around 30 years ago <laughs> mm-hmm. and been in on uh, what the angels told the shepherds yeah. when he's born, you might have had a clue as that he really did come down from heaven. Because the truth is, he was virgin born. But see, they're, they come along later and they're just assuming they don't know all about him because they know him somewhat in the flesh and they know his brothers and sisters and their kids have played with uh, Jesus and uh, his brothers and sisters so they just assume that he's just another man but he wasn't just another man Amen? Amen. Amen. and all that Jesus did was according to God's will he wasn't here to do his own thing and that's the toughest thing probably for us to get settled in our own hearts and minds. Yes, sir. We're told from the time we're little that, you know, plan your work and work your plan, you yes, know, set right. yourself a goal and work to that goal and so forth and so on. But the more you're in love with the Lord and in love with His Word, the more you learn, no, you got to kind of take your hands off the driver wheel of your life. But just trust your co-pilot, Jesus, to take over. Amen. You become the co-pilot. Let him be the pilot. Amen. <laughs> That's the thing about that little sign. People like that little right. sign. They made that movie. God is my co-pilot. No, God should be the pilot. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, you're the co-pilot. Amen. Right. But you see Jesus' purpose there in verse 38. Then we have God's will for those whom he gives to Christ. And this is the Father's will which hath sent, which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So again, Jesus won't lose nobody. Amen. If you trust him as the good shepherd and be his sheep, he'll take care of you. Take care of you. He said, you you won't want. You'll have cool water when you need it. You'll have fresh grass when you need it. And he's even got a couple sheep dogs, mercy and goodness and mercy, that'll follow you around all the days of your life. Then plus, then you get to go on to the house of the Lord forever. So it's a win-win situation. In Jesus' promise, he'll resurrect you in that last day. Right. So you'll be resurrected with those that are just, not those that are unjust. Amen. Mm-hmm. Then lastly, we see God's will for the believer. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him right. may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Notice how he said this as a promise. And he did, this is the second time he said it. Now again, Jesus really did not stutter. He didn't have a stuttering problem. Why in the world did he say it twice? Because he's trying to get it through somebody's thick head. But we don't seem to be able to get it, do we? So he's going to have to say it one more time. He's going to end up saying it three times. Yeah. That he'll raise us up at the last day. For us to get it solid in our minds and hearts and realize, listen, Jesus can't lie. Amen. Titus 1 2. God that cannot lie. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now, he 
you want to partake of that bread of life, this is how you take partake of it. You know, this is what brought all this on. You know, he fed the 5,000. and they, Man, they wanted to make him king by force. No, 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 Jesus isn't in the force. And uh, then these clowns find him the next day, you know, and then they're following him for bread. They only want bread. And he's saying, no, 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 you guys can't get it. It's not about bread. It's not about your belly. It's about your heart. Yeah. Mr. Wormbrandt, you know, I've been telling you a lot about Mr. Wormbrandt because, of course, I've made him my study lately. And it's so precious because he, in my little book that I'm printing called Underground Church Secrets, I tell you the secret to brainwashing. You know what the secret to brainwashing is? The secret to brainwashing is heart washing. <laughs> if your heart's been made washed clean by the blood of Jesus, then believe you me, they can fool with your brain all they want and they ain't going to do no good. <laughs> because the way to the brain is through the heart. See, the communists don't know that. And so, the Lord Jesus is trying to help these fellows get a hold of this truth. See, the Catholics, again, they, they go crazy over this chapter. They, this is, if a Catholic was to have a chapter in the Bible, this will become their greatest mm -hmm. chapter. Because yes, Jesus right. is going to say, if you don't eat his flesh and drink his blood, you can't have no eternal life. See? Yeah. And so they want to teach, see there, so you've got to have that Eucharist. That's why they make a big thing out of this Eucharist and have taken the Lord's Supper. And they insist that you have to believe it really does become Jesus' body, his real flesh and blood. When the priest holds it up and says the magic Latin words, horcus porcus on it. Then it changes into his real flesh and blood. And that when you eat it, you're literally taking these verses, literally true, you're eating his flesh and drinking his blood. But notice how in this chapter, Jesus not one time took a knife and cut his thumb off and said, chew on this. <laughs> this is my flesh. And this is the bread. And here, slit his wrist, poured in a cup, say, drink this. This is my blood. Now, if he had, they might have had a case. <laughs> but they have no case. Because Jesus didn't do that. <laughs> right, right. But Jesus is helping them understand and explain that he's speaking to them about spiritual things. They wanted to zoom in on their stomachs and their bellies, and they said, well, can't you give, me, give us some of this bread that God had Moses uh, sent down from heaven, and it was angels, food, cake. We want to taste that thing and see what it tastes like. And he keeps telling them, no, you got to eat that bread that come down from heaven, and it's me. <laughs> see? And of course, he'd offer he'd offer his body on that cross, wouldn't he? They beat his body, and they put it in the ground for three days and three nights. So, verse forty-one: a person's got to stop rebelling against the claims of Jesus. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, "I am the bread which came down from heaven." Yeah. See, they wanted to argue semantics with it. And they just thought it was illogical of him to say such a thing. Because they knew who his dad was. They knew who his mom was. They knew who his brothers and sisters were. The religionists questioned Jesus' origin. They misunderstood the incarnation that Jesus came out of heaven. <laughs> and they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. See, from their perspective, that's how it looks. So it had to be that way. It's never how it looks. You know, the old saying says, uh, uh, believe only half of what you... Let's see, how's it go? Don't believe anything you hear and believe only half of what you see. Because you can't even trust your eyes. Yeah, that's true. They said... Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know? No, you didn't know his father because his father was in heaven. Joseph wasn't his father. Right. No, he acted as his dad. Amen. <laughs> Every kid is going to have to have somebody be his dad in this world. Amen. Yeah. Whose father and mother we know, how is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Now again, I can't tell you what a pleasure it was. To have this audience of, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 people there or so last night. 
and read this passage and tell now let's turn over here to Mark. Here's another place. When Jesus was in his hometown of Nazareth once and he first started preaching, he had a chance to go in there and read the Bible to him. And they said something very similar. Notice what it says here, Mark 3 in verse... Uh, let's see, did I say Mark 3? Is it Mark 6? I think I want to go to Mark 6. Yeah, 6. Verse 3. Verse 2 says, And when the Sabbath day was coming, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things, and what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? They couldn't quite figure it out, because Jesus had not moved away to India or somewhere. He had not gone off to Bible college nowhere. He had not been off somewhere. They knew him. That he, he was working in his dad's carpenter shop one day, and then he quit and was preaching the next. So they wondered, where in the world is he? He didn't go off to seminary. How is it he knows so much and can do so many wonderful things? See, Jesus, you might say, was sort of like a sleeper. You know, he was uh, he, he was right there under their feet all the time, and they didn't recognize him. Then all of a sudden, when he turned 30, now it's time to start ministry. Boom, all of a sudden, man, now he's a bright, shining light, going for God, preaching the gospel. So it just blew their minds. Notice what they said. Verse 3, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? Now, here's his, here's Jesus' stepbrother. See, of course, Joseph, the Bible makes it a big deal, Matthew, right. to tell us that Jesus was only Mary's firstborn. Of course, her being a virgin, of course, it was her firstborn, because then there would be more children born later by her and Joseph. Right. Right. So the Bible tells us their names here. Let's see what Jesus' stepbrother's names were. And the brother of James. Jesus was the brother of James and Joseph. Of course, if his daddy's name's Joseph, well, somebody's got to be Joseph Jr. Right. <laughs> and that's all the name Joseph means. It's just the nickname for Joseph, but they call him little Joey, you know, or Joseph. Because he's, he's Junior, see? Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's, it makes perfect sense that somebody would have to be named Joseph, you know? I mean, they're not... That much Jews. they got to be a little bit hillbilly somewhere there. <laughs> brother James and Joseph and Judah. He had a little brother named Judas. See? Because that's very popular to be named after Judah of the tribe of Judah. And Simon. See, he even had a Simon, brother named Simon. It's easy for him to talk to Peter and call him Simon. He had a brother named Simon. I'm sure he probably thought of his brother every time he called Simon. See? <laughs> that's the way I am. I don't know if you're that way, but... Isn't that what you are of your family and your family name stuff? Yeah. So see, Jesus had one, two, three, four brothers. So there were five boys in Joseph and Mary's family. And then, as I've said before, we know he had and are not his sisters. See, Joseph and Mary had even girls, too. And generally speaking, the Bible will speak of if a man had a sister, it'll say sister. So if Jesus only had one, it would say he had a sister, but no, he didn't have a sister. He had more than one sister. And generally, if he had two sisters, like Lazarus did, and it'll, it'll speak about, and both his sisters here with us. And so they'll use the word both sisters. But now, if it means he had more than two, if he had three or more, it would say sisters, uh, like it says. So you got Joseph and Mary here with at least eight children. Okay, eight children to buy Christmas presents for, or whatever you're going to do at your house, you know. Eight, eight children, and then there's Joseph Mary. This is a family of ten. Okay, this is the house Jesus was raised in, and the Bible is very clear that most of Jesus' brothers and sisters did not believe on him at first, because most of them grew up hating Jesus, and you would too. Because if you're playing marbles or you're playing with your brother and sister and you start kicking each other and carrying on and Mary comes in the room and says, now Jesus, who did it? Jesus has to tell the truth. <laughs> right. Well, Jesus was a stick in the mud. He was a spoil sport. I mean, he's, not, he's got to tell the truth all the time. He can't cover nobody. He can't lie for nobody. And so, of course, they hated him. Only after his resurrection, then the Bible says they started to believe. So that even James wrote a book in the Bible, and we believe Jude's a book written by his other brother. We believe both of them, James and uh, Jude, both became prominent in the church after Jesus' resurrection. But they didn't even believe on him at first. 
And in fact, Jesus, when he starts saying he's going to go to Calvary and die and go to Jerusalem, they're going to convince Mary that they're right and go tell Jesus, Jesus, be quiet. You don't know what you're saying. You're discouraging people. They're, they're going to do their best to discourage Jesus from even saying such a thing. Of course, they'll eat crow later and they'll, <laughs> and they'll straighten up. But that's how it was, see? And it was so much fun to tell this people, tell these people that to come listen, show that verse to them, and speak to them. And I turned to one of our ladies there, who's been pretty faithful, and she likes to sing. She was out of a Lutheran church, and I said, "Now, Betty, has anyone ever showed you that verse? Have you ever known the names of Jesus' stepbrothers?" She says, "No, Pastor. That's Amen. the first time." Right. Isn't that sad? That is That's sad. sad. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad they're learning it now. Right. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And so this is what's going on here. They said, oh, no, no, we know who you are. What do you mean you come down from heaven? Man, you just come from Nazareth. You know. Right. What do you mean you, God sent you? Joseph's your dad. <laughs> oh, no, no, he's got a lot higher than that. Than that. <laughs> so Jesus appealed. For them to stop grumbling and rebelling. Verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto him, Murmur not among yourselves. Then we see secondly, a person must be drawn by God. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. He needs to be drawn to be raised up at the last day. Only God can do that. God has to give you the common sense enough to come in out of the rain, and that's a fact. (laughs) I really do count on that saying. Here comes the sun, somebody said. If you can't believe that sun's coming up, then you probably can't believe Jesus rose from the dead either. You just can't believe it. Because you don't believe your eyes again. You believe your lies your eyes are lying to you, and you keep telling yourself a lie saying, Well, we're still to see the earth spinning and turning, and it's really <laughs> you believe that fairy tale and that legend. So of course you're gonna have trouble believing that Jesus could be dead three days and nights so and then literally come out of the ground. That should be easy for you to believe. Right. See? I just don't have enough faith to be an evolutionist. I'm just telling you straight up. I just believe God. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Okay. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they shall be all taught of God. Now, we've got an Old Testament verse that says we're going to be taught of God. Amen? God has to be your teacher. And yet they couldn't accept that Jesus is God teaching them. Amen? They couldn't accept that. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. See, these Jews somehow want to say, they're sort of like a Jehovah's Witness. They said, we believe in Jehovah's name, and we're holding his name holy. And we're Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, it's like these other guys. we got a big movement in America. They call themselves the Prince of Yahweh. And yeah, they right. think God's true name is Yahweh. And somehow they're better than everybody else because they can say the name Yahweh. And, of course, all the word Yahweh is is a bastardization of the word Jehovah. Right. That's right. So... Who's right, the Jehovah Witnesses or the friends of Yahweh? You know, you know, let them go at it. You know. They don't realize, no, it's all about Jesus. Amen. You know, they, they want to believe that somehow God the Father is uniquely separated way up there and more holy than Jesus is as God the Son. But no, no, no. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, seen of angels, Amen. preached to the Gentiles. Amen. Received up in the glory. And this same Jesus is coming again someday. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. When Jesus says, He that seen me has seen the Father, He was right. Because in Him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Bible said. So, Jesus, I love it because he, He's able to take the Scriptures, Old Testament Scriptures, and nail it and say, Look, they shall be 
all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. I'm God. I'm, I'm God. I'm the Father's promise to you. you can't, could you get a better verse to prove that Jesus is God than that? And yet these clowns want to say, oh no, Jesus never claimed to be God. <laughs> what do you think he's saying there? <laughs> you know what I mean? How stupid are they? Jesus, that's why he said he's the only way to heaven. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So because no man has seen God, verse 46. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. So see, they didn't understand over there in Micah 2, 5 where the promise was given. That, see, Jesus was from everlasting. See, Jesus was from everlasting. Oh, sure. He entered into this time and space compendium, compendium through the matrix of Mary and lived 33 years on this earth. But then now he's going to return to heaven and return to everlasting, see? So again, we see that importance. That Jesus being from God needs to be seen as God. Amen. Okay, my clock tells me five minutes. Shut up, preacher. So a person must believe in Christ. Verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath, not hopes to maybe, but hath everlasting mm -hmm. life. How long does that last? Forever. Forever, amen. Mm -hmm. Forever. Believe he's the bread of life. I am the bread of life. That's why when you got Jesus, you got real life. You don't even know what life is till you get Jesus. Amen. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. <laughs> they kept their, they think they just want something, a piece of bread. And Jesus is trying to tell them, no, you don't want a piece of bread. It can't do you no good. The belly, which you got to satisfy, it's the heart. They ate that manna, but they all died. <coughs> It's this believing. you got to believe in me. That's how you digest this truth. That's how you get this everlasting, eternal life. That's how you get this kind of life that lasts forever. It's that soul. you got to get plugged into God and get clean in the soul. See? This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Now see, the Jews, they love to eat. And they love to taste and savor that food in their mouth. And this is what Jesus is trying to communicate to them. Just like you meditate on that, just like you regurgitate that food like a cow, you really get a hold of that. Okay, well that's how you need to understand the Lord. See, you need to, you need to accept Jesus in the words of Jesus and what he's telling you. You want to follow Jesus. You want to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. You want to fully grasp Jesus. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Sure, he could have pulled, he could have jumped off that cross anytime he wanted to. He wasn't guilty. <coughs> he could have proved it in the court of law. He wasn't guilty. But he voluntarily died as our substitute so that he would be the one punished in our place. And that's why we can receive this everlasting eternal life if we'll believe on him. Because he's the good shepherd. He'll raise us up at the last day. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And see, you'll never die. He says, you'll never die. You'll, all, you'll always live. Now, now we know we're going to die. <laughs> right. One of these days, we'll just keel over and be gone. But yet, what he's saying is, no, you'll never know when you're dead. I mean, yeah, you will, but yet you won't because it's like 1 Corinthians 15 says, there's a sting removed from death right. for the believer. See? Right. So, 
like I always illustrate it, I'm alive. Okay, it's like being in the car. You know you're moving, 35, 45. I'm, the, I'm on the bus. I've seen Merle come around the corner. Wave that. If he didn't see me, he's no. But I'm in the bus, you know. I Believe me, I get that baby going. I know I'm moving in that bus. I had it up there about 65 one day. And my boss was saying, oh, no, you don't drive the bus like a Mustang. <laughs> no, why not? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> you know, you can be driving a car and you feel that you feel it pushing against the seat. You feel those gravity, that gravity pushing against the seat. You know? and, and just like any car, you're moving. All right, you're alive. You're moving. You feel you're moving. But now, what happens if you stop that gas pedal down in the passing gear? Somebody, you got to pass, so you're gonna get around them fast. Now you're really moving. See? Right. Well, that's what it's like. You're alive. You know you're alive. But all of a sudden, when you die, you just really start living. You know what I mean? You know, I see you, you see me. But if all of a sudden I fell over in the floor, you know, you guys are getting a panic, you know, call 911. But the truth is, I'd go from seeing all you, then all of a sudden my spiritual eyes be open, and now I'd see all the demons in here, and then I'd see the angels here to take me to heaven. And I mean, wow, I'd go from living to really living. See? Right. I'd go from just tasting you know, the mucus in the back of my mouth or whatever, to, you know, s smelling the sounds and, you know, hearing the colors. Yeah. I go from living to really living, Amen. you know, and step into that supernatural world and get to see the Lord and uh, all the saints. Wow! That's what it's like for a believer. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone who doesn't believe, well, that's terrible. And there's all kinds of books been written. People telling how that when they died, they, they 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 saw devils coming after them. They they saw the flames of hell, and, and they're describing it as they die. And this is why today we shoot everybody up with drugs. We don't want to hear those stories. We don't want to tell nobody that evolution is not true and the Bible's true. And there's a spiritual world, a supernatural world about us. We get them drugged up so nobody tells nobody nothing. Yeah. How crooked and evil and deceived the devil is. And the devil is doing people. And our system is sold out to the devil. So that he could say to Jesus, Hey, Jesus, bow down, worship me. And I'll give you these kingdoms of the world. And Jesus said, No thanks, I'm not going to take no shortcuts. I'll go ahead and go the way of the Father and go to the cross. And it's a hard way, I know, and it's a rough road. But in the end, it will be the best way. Amen? All right, let's stand up. We'll give an invitation. We invite you now if you want, want to make things right with the Lord. Here's your chance.